To induct R.E.M. into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, please welcome Eddie Vedder. Good evening. Uh, yes. You know, as a kid growing up in school, if you were ever to even daydream about being a musician, one of the most appealing aspects uh, that you could think of, of, of being paid to play music uh, was that you'd never ever again have to write another paper or give an oral presentation. <laughs> but here we are, and I must say I am hugely honored. R.E.M.'s music is truly all-encompassing. They've uh, used every color on the palette. They've, they've invented colors on their own. And the story of how they got together could not be written, especially considering this evening, uh, could not be written any more romantic. And, and that is that Michael Stipe and Peter Buck first meet at a record store where Peter's working. Their first conversation, their first discussion, um, was about Patti Smith's first four records. Uh, drummer Bill Berry and bassist, etc. Mike Mills, uh, they get to know each other in high school. They play in high school band together. The two pairs of friends meet in college in Athens. 27 years later, they're being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You see how I cut the middle out to make it move along? But there are a couple of things I need to address, and the hardest one being Michael Stipe. And how do you explain the dialogue between Michael and, and the listener, uh, a dialogue that grew up and, and we grew up with it? Uh, such wisdom in, in the feelings of these songs that I, I think they helped us find things that, that we knew were inside us. And, and I think he, they helped us find things that we didn't know we had inside us. And I can say that personally, there are things that I hold and feel very deeply about inside here that Michael Stipe put in there himself. This all happens without ever being able to understand a f thing he was saying. This is the early records, and um, and it's it was it's such a beautiful such a beautiful thing, and it's, it's so open to interpretation. All this, you know, I was lucky enough in uh, the summer of 1984 to get to see REM play live uh, at a small place in Chicago, um, and it changed how I listened to music and and what I listened to. Uh, because after that I just started listening to them exclusively and at that time they only had one and a half records um, and I've, I've done the math so I didn't exaggerate but this record Murmur I must if it's 44 Murmur If I take three months over that summer of 84 and, and, and do the math, and Murmur runs at about 44 minutes, I, I believe I listened to it 1,260 times. <laughs> and one of the reasons I was listening so incessantly is I had to know what he was saying. <laughs> He's a true poet. Uh, he can, he can be direct, he can be completely abstract, he can hit an emotion with pinpoint accuracy, or he can be completely oblique and it all resonates. That's Michael. I love him. Peter Buck plays guitar like a guy who worked in a record store. And when I say that, I, I, I say that it, it, it's not necessarily derivative of all this music that he knows, his guitar playing. He knows this music so well, but it's, it's more of a thing where he plays through the holes and invents things and hits spots that have yet to be covered. And I, I think 
thereby pushing the progression of, of rock and roll. Uh, I think of him and his beautiful daughters and uh, what he has contributed, cutting a path for alternative music, uh, for bands like Nirvana and Radiohead, and, and forever on after that. Um, from a record store in Athens to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a tremendous journey. Uh, now, if R.E.M. had a secret weapon, I would say it was Mr. Mike Mills. He plays bass, piano, a number of instruments, and is the writer of, uh, a genius writer of music. But uh, the, the secret weapon, I believe, is his voice. Uh, it's... Uh, it's really not a background vocal. It's, it's almost like a second lead vocal. And I, I think it really is what makes so many of their songs uh, absolutely haunting. Um, and he's, it's, secret, it's stealth. He's stealth. Or, or actually, actually, he was stealth till about 14 years ago when he took to wearing these really bright colored suits <laughs> with massive embroidery and rhinestones and and that's a gutsy move at the time because this you know grunge this was about the time when grunge was in fashion so this was now I don't know if you know this story about drummer Bill Berry but right around that time the the time of the suits um, or Mike's suits uh, Bill Berry has a uh, he, he He's playing in Switzerland, and in the middle of a show, an aneurysm bursts in his head, and he almost dies. And um, I think I read somewhere where it might have been triggered by uh, a uh, strobe light. But I, I was just thinking about it, it might have been one of Mike's suits. <laughs> the, the orange one, perhaps. So, in all seriousness, uh, Peter Buck has said that if, if uh, they weren't in Switzerland at the time and they had tremendous doctors, he may not have lived. And uh, Bill recovers after a couple months of intense rehab, and then the most difficult uh, hurdle they've had to reach was when, when Bill had to say that he didn't think he could keep playing with them. And, and he did it, uh, when he did it, he said, but I need to know that you will continue. And in his own words, he said, I, I can't be the schmuck who broke up R.E.M. And so, much to his relief, they've continued on and done incredible things. Uh, as a fan, it's an incredible, exciting thrill to see him here tonight. But what I'm saying is, no matter what we can give them back in the form of this honor, uh, we'll, we'll never match what they've given to us, and this is not even mentioning social causes and activism, which is, should not be a postscript. It's, uh, they've taught us a lot about that as well, and inspired us. And... So I am truly indebted, and I say that uh, as a representative of so many, and I say thank you for myself, and from the huge numbers of people around the world who have been moved by them um, and by some strange power invested in me. Right now, I hereby induct R.E.M. into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs>